you originally started on a major on Def Jam, mm -hmm. right? What made you say that, you know what, Def Jam, I'm gonna I'm go and do my own thing? Well, see, it's what happened, right? So, you already know how that type of shit works. Uh huh, yeah, so, yeah, I know it's for the fans. Yeah, no, no, but like, <laughs> so with, it's just universal, you feel mm -hmm. me? So, like, I'm on there, I was on Def Jam for a long time. Uh, it just didn't make sense, mm -hmm. you feel me? And, uh, and it's not that it didn't make sense because I was fucking up or they was fucking up. It's just everybody want different things, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. now we got the, uh, the little situation via Motown, but it's like, it's 2021. Right. You feel me? So it's like, when you think about the idea of a record company, mm -hmm. they basically, they give you the loan and they front mm -hmm. the distribution mm -hmm. to make your CDs. And basically charge you triple what, yeah, they, what they give. But yeah. you don't, there are no fucking CDs. Nothing is physical. Right. That shit does not exist no more. And then we still kind of get tricked a little bit because like, we still kind of falling for the same tricks. It's like mm -hmm. it's like a vanity play in a sense. Like, oh man, this motherfucker, like, it's something like a nigga like Tyler, right? The homie just sold 150,000 albums, mm -hmm. right? He didn't sell 150,000 albums. He, he had sold millions like a, of streams. Yeah, millions, right. yeah, yeah, you yeah. Feel me? But, but they're telling him he sold 150,000. Exactly. Because they're not finna tell these niggas, yeah. oh man, you yeah. had millions yeah. of billions yeah. of people listening to you in three days. They're not right. gonna tell you that because right. then you're gonna be like, damn, if I'm able to do that, then without, I don't need them. You feel what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, and essentially, like, when you think about press in general, like, you got y'all, you got uh, you got Gilly and Wallow, you got mm -hmm. Joe. It's a lot of people mm -hmm. that's taken out. Cause mm -hmm. when I was younger, you feel me? Right. They would, the press would be like, oh man, tell us about the yeah. streets and being yeah. a nigger. And it's like, yeah. what y'all yeah, 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 talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. So at this point in time, like, just the whole shit is changing, but I think it's, you know. And artists, they own press now, cause social media allows you to be <laughs> your own press. Yeah, but it's like, essentially, it's. This shit is like magazines and shit like that turning to pictures. Like, right, this right. shit is pictures. Like, you can post the pictures and then, <laughs> oh, you put, oh, I was in GQ and it's a vanity place. Right. People feel like you're popping because you was in <laughs> GQ, New York Times, or yada, right. yada. You can post the same pictures without that tagging. How many do y'all need? How many stories do y'all need? How many times do you need to hear from these artists that we love and respect need to tell you what it's like inside these major label systems? Do you just want to know that bad for yourself? You just want to watch the car crash, watch the murder that bad yourself? Is that what you want to do? I don't. I'm not into that stuff. I'm not into blood. I'm not into gore like that. I don't mind it, but I'm not into it. Somebody tell me something is hot, I believe them. Especially if I've seen hundreds of people get their hands burned. I've seen hundreds of people get their hands caught on fire in the music industry. Yet y'all still want it. Why? Someone tell me in the comments why. How do labels finesse artists? There's three things that we're really going to focus on in this video. Three pretty good points that if you're somebody that wants to be in the music business or learn more about the music business or somebody that's interested in music industry secrets and tips and you stay locked in you need to watch the entire video make sure you get all three points you're going to hit like too and you're going to comment in the comments you're going to save this if you're on youtube you're going to give via super chat and super stickers while it goes live you're going to hit share right now and you're going to watch till i'm done talking my ducks my swans welcome to the pod my name is Dorian from group82university.com and right here we got Vince Staples talking about how labels finesse artists. I'm trying to make it jovial because I'm sick of this shit. She's making me angry. No fluff. First point, record contracts are outdated on purpose. So have you ever read a record contract? Realistically. They're available online. They're available in books. I know a lot of y'all don't know what books are. They're these things that you can open up and look at and you get knowledge from paper or they're even on your phone or iPad. They're pretty cool. Go grab one. There's one in particular. All you need to know about the music business by Donald Passman. It's inside of my reading list. If you click the link in the bio on Twitter or Instagram, scroll down. You can look at the books that I read. This is one of the books in there that I read. It's a very complicated book. And inside of there, Donald Passman goes through the little caveats of things that might be inside of a record copy. You should really look at it and read it because me having a master's degree and I consider myself somewhat of a smart person Well, I'm lying. I consider myself an intelligent person. It still is a lot for me I'm like there's no way the average artist understands this because even somebody who has somewhat of an understanding of legal mumbo-jumbo I have a hard time processing this record contracts are made to be understood by entertainment lawyers They still have physical distribution charges inside of a record contract. What does that mean? They still charge you for shipping CDs. Was the last time you bought a CD? It used to be back in the CD days that if CDs got lost or broken, the record label had to pay for it. But the record label's cowards. So who they have pay for it? They had the artists pay for it. Yeah, we know that you had nothing to do with those CDs getting lost, stolen, or broken. But we're going to charge your budget for it. We're going to take money from you and your family. Because that's how the contract is set up. Street promo. 
billboards. Last time you clicked on something you saw on a billboard. Last time you seen a street team out here promoting someone's CD. It doesn't happen anymore like that. But some big festival. And there's a reason why they're doing it because they probably got a show there that night. They still charge artists for this. If you know anybody who was signed to a record company, ask them for a complete transparent audit of their books. Hire your own accountant be like, hey man, I want to see my books. They legally have to do that. And if they don't want to do that, you need to leave. So that way you can see how much is being taken and how much that you owe and how much you should be getting paid. You'd be surprised the finessing that goes on inside these record label deals. Second point, charts are rigged. I did a whole video on it. It's doing pretty well on Instagram and on YouTube. I need to go watch it. I completely break down on how the charts are rigged. But because of that, there's no way for the average artist or the above average artist to know how they're accurately being consumed by the audience because record labels do everything that they can to make first weeks look bigger than they actually were or they'll do everything that they can to make your first week in record sales look smaller than they actually were because there's no transparent accounting system. Kanye West has talked about this ad nauseum. He talked about it on the Joe Rogan podcast i think he might have mentioned it in his twitter rant where he was revealing all his contracts there is no way an artist can go to a record label as an employee and say i literally want to see the numbers transparently in regards to me you have to do what i just told you to do which is go hire an accountant and make them do an audit how insane is that and the charts are the exact same way they're putting the people on the charts where they make the most money off of. They're keeping the people off the charts where they don't make money off of. There is no way that we had these artists growing up who were huge when they were signed to a record deal and they went number one and they had two or three albums went number one. And the moment their contract was up and they went independent, now all of a sudden you don't see them on the chart at all anymore when they drop their next project. How did it fall off that quickly? We didn't lose love for them that fast. No way. What happens is y'all didn't want to put them on the charts anymore because like I broke down in that video, you own them. And the last and final point that everybody everybody should know and pay attention to whether you make music or not is that clout chasers run entertainment i'm not a clout chaser i'm not no groupie nigga i don't care about people's business i don't follow none of them gossip sites i never was in the world star i never was into like national Enquirer or even people or any of the teen vogue i, I went into none of that man i didn't care like i don't know these people at all they're humans just like me you know they were in the right situation where they were born with the right people got pictures taken of them got videos taken of them and they were able to use their talent now everybody want to tell the whole world about them. That's fine. That's fine. You ain't no different than me though, bro. I've always believed that. Ain't no man, no woman, no different than me. I can accomplish whatever I want to. I put my mind to it just like anybody else. But a lot of people don't think like that. And a lot of people are fascinated, turned on, as weird as that sounds, by other people's business. And the entertainment industry has taken advantage of that more so than any other industry. Clout chasing, spammy, you know, what y'all call clickbait, which isn't even a real term. Things that you you have to do if you want to be in this because clout chasers run entertainment it's not just the fans it's not just the artists managers are clout chasers a and r's are 1000 percent clout chasers publicists are clout chasers podcasters are clout chasers entrepreneurs they call themselves are clout chasers label execs are clout chasers security cops lawyers anybody that's in the entertainment industry has a clout chasing element about them because you have to in order to succeed in this i got clout chasing elements about me how so the title of this video vince staples on how labels finesse artists i don't use finesse in normal conversations like that i definitely didn't use finesse in any papers i wrote in college or anytime i had to express myself through written form so why did i use finesse here because y'all clout chasing asses were gonna click it and we made it red too so it'll stand out for you that's how this works. So whatever you do, whatever field you're in of entertainment, understand whoever you're talking to is a clout chaser. They're a groupie. Find what they're a groupie for. Find why they are chasing clout. And you will find their why and then use that to your advantage to get whatever the hell you want out of them. Record labels execs, they want power and they want money. They have shown that. So unless you're going to give them power over you and give them money, they're not going to pay any attention to you. So I don't know why y'all even pay attention to them. Clout chasers run this business. Everything you do needs to appeal to them in some capacity without losing your morals and without losing your integrity. And that's a very tough thing to do. For those of y'all that are interested in doing this the right way and owning your stuff so you don't have to get finessed by a label, you usually know how to market your music a little bit better. My class, How to Market Your Music on Social Media, is the best music marketing class in the market. Hands down, number one's been rated. You on Instagram, click the link up top and buy it and enroll right now. You on YouTube, click the link in the box, buy it and enroll right now. You on YouTube, make sure you watch another one of my videos too. Not the pod. Y'all stay true. Scroll. 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 Scroll.
group82university.com.